Today we're going to talk about Will Smith. We're going to do an analysis on his video that he did with when he was doing an interview with Trevor Noah a few days ago. Greg, why don't you tell us about the videos we're going to watch? I think that's all you really get is he's asking him questions about the Chris Rock incident and a couple of other things. That's all you need to know. You know, you are... No, you are. <laughs> you, you are. You, you will Smith. Yeah. You are, you are mm. one of the biggest movie stars that has ever existed. You know, one of my favorite people that I've ever seen inhabit a screen. Thank you, man. You know, and then you, you had the Oscars. Yeah. Where in one night... You... I have no independent recollection of the... <laughs> I, I can only imagine, you, because you, you know, you, you, you won, you know, you won your first Oscar yeah. that night, a well-deserved Oscar that night, but it is, it is simultaneously, in many ways, not yeah. the worst, I won't say the worst, because I know yeah. the life you've lived, I've read yeah, the book, yeah, yeah. but it is one of the best days of yeah. your life and one of the worst days yeah. of your life. And I, I would, I'd love to know, I mean, just, you know, us yeah. talking, first of all, what has the journey been like since that day? Like, because we, we everyone speculates. Everyone yeah, just yeah, sees yeah, it and yeah. goes, I think this, I think that, I think mm -hmm. this, I think that. What has it been like for you? Yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was a horrific night, uh, a, as you can imagine. Um, you know, there's many nuances and, and complexities to it, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, I just, I lost it, you know. And I guess what I would say, you just never know what somebody's going through. You know, mm. you know in, the, in the audience right now, you know, you're sitting next to uh, strangers, you know, and somebody's mother died last week, you know? Um, somebody's child is sick, you know? Um, somebody just lost their job. Somebody just found out their spouse cheated. You know, there's, it's like there's all these things and these, there's strangers and you just don't know what's going on with people, you know? And there's, I was going through something that night, you know? And uh, not that that, you know, justifies my behavior yeah, at no, all. No, I would just say, you know, you're asking what did I learn? And it's that, um, we just gotta be nice to each other, man. You know, it's like, it's hard. And I guess the thing that was most painful for me is I took my heart and made it hard for other people. You know, right. and it's like, I understood the idea where they say hurt people hurt people, Yeah, yeah. you know. Chase, what do you got? You know, throughout Will's entire life, he uses socialization to discuss issues. And I don't think this is a tactic per se, but I think it's something that he probably unconsciously learned from a very young age to get people to understand things. I think it's also the way he probably sees the entire world. Will immediately socializes the situation, starting out by shifting the pronouns from himself to the audience while still describing his own experiences. I think it's brilliant. It's a great demonstration of obtaining what, what we call in psychology social coherence. And he illustrates some really common situations of suffering that he knows, and most people should know that a lot of people can identify with. And I think his lesson learned is that he has to be nice to people. Uh, it's we as a group. So he's saying that it's we have to be nice, not just me. So it's everybody. So he's sharing the grief or he's sharing some of that uh, problem with the crowd. We see that there. Scott, what do you got? All right. I think once he's looking for acceptance, obviously, and once he gets that acceptance from the audience, he sits, sits back and sort of takes it in and he almost relaxes. And then when Trevor says, so what's the journey been like, you know, so far, he takes a deep breath. And he's getting ready to answer that, getting sort of relaxed and trying to stay relaxed because he's been in therapy and they've gone over how to approach these things because he knows he's still got two or three of these style interviews left. As he leans forward as he prepares to answer and he barriers with his hands. He gets that arm out like that. But he sticks his head out, not over his arms yet, but over his arms. And that mm, lets us know that he's into it. He wants to engage, which apparently that's what you'd want to do, you know, obviously in a situation like this. So he's getting ready and he's showing that he's engaged. And I think what we're hearing is, is he's a victim of, and I know Greg and I are going to differ on this, of a language virus where he's saying, yeah, nah. Because in the past, you don't hear him saying, yeah, nah. There's not, I haven't heard him 
<clears throat> say that very often. In this first one, he says it, <clears throat> excuse me, 18 times. 18 times in that little clip. He says, yeah, no, which sort of completely, completely destroys that oomph of sincerity or validity for me. Um, because, because it just does, makes him sound not as smart when he keeps saying, yeah, nah, when it wasn't. And so it, it lets you know that he's been around somebody that talks like that and he looks up to him. They're the alpha. They're the person that, that, that he's maybe taking information from or the person who's hanging out with him, a new, a new person, because quite often that will happen. You'll hear somebody he thinks really cool and everything. They'll be using certain terms or phrases and you'll start doing that as well. Um, then he turns to the audience and he tries to connect with them, but it doesn't take. When he says, we just have to be good to each other. That's what it was. When he said, when he says that and he looks at the audience as he's saying it, they don't quite buy it. And so he's still trying to, to look relaxed and still trying to explain what's happening. Um, and then he's throwing out the catchphrases he's heard in therapy, like hurt people, hurt people, things like that, which is fine. It's true. And all those are valid, but it lets you know where his head's at, where he's coming from. I don't know if he's doing that on purpose so we can see that he's been in therapy and been working on all, all this stuff, but that's what he's there for to show that he's been working on it, working on himself and trying to pull himself out of this hole he's dug. Um, I feel sorry for him because it's, he's trying to pull himself out, but so far it's not working really well. I think it looks good because Trevor Noah is doing such a good job of making him look, uh, you know, respectful and, and the way he, uh, the way he does interviews. I think this is great. We'll see him, um, create this thing where, okay, here you go, man. And he keeps this beach ball up with him, making him look really, really cool and solid. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I think the, you know, is a colloquial thing. I don't think he's copying anyone necessarily. I think it's just become some from somewhere he's hanging out. It is a delaying technique. What Will Smith does magically is flirtation. And I don't mean that sexually. I mean, he flirts with the audience. He connects with the audience and draws them into his space. If you ever pay attention to him, he is really, really trying to connect with an audience anytime he's talking to the interviewer. He's not talking to the interviewer. He turns and faces away even to get connection with the audience. I agree with you. He tries a flip out there when he talks about we got to all be kind to each other. He gets crickets. You expect clapping and all that. He did, too. You see his face as he turns to look. And he's smart enough. He didn't show that he was disappointed in that. He went back to, you know, and he drags out. That's giving him time to slowly pitch what he wants to say out. I have friends who use that when they're pausing and thinking, work with people in Chicago specifically who use that term a fair amount when I was listening to them. It's more of a filler than anything else. I also think he's treading a minefield early, so he's going to be very cautious in this first part. It's clear he knows what Trevor Noah is going to talk about. That's not no surprise. You don't see surprise in his face. And I think we just see more of, you're dead on chase. The organism does what made the organism successful. Will Smith has gotten to where he is by being conscious of other people. And he says what we said in the first analysis, that roll of the eyes and hard eye contact by the wife was something he was going through. There's probably more behind the scenes than we even know a whole lot more communication that that meant something that we, we don't know because they have a microculture and that coordinated uh, conversation and quick signaling probably had something to do with what he's going through. Mark, what do you got? Yeah. Uh, so let's start off with Noah. He absolutely tiptoes around his first question. He dances around it. Knowing how direct you could be in asking that first question takes him a long time to get to the point. He qualifies, he moves uh, goalposts on it, he reframes elements. So uh, really Noah is doing his best to set up uh, the criteria under which Smith is going to answer these, and he knows he wants to set up a more than fair criteria, if not a very pleasant uh, criteria for this questioning. Um, so interesting from Noah, who, who one would expect to be a little more acerbic, a little more critical, given his job. He's being super kind uh, in this particular place, I would say. Uh, Smith said, oh, by the way, uh, that you know, check out how many times Noah says that in this first video. Mm -hmm. Check out how many times Noah says that in the fifth video we and yep. last video we get to. So it's we can see how charismatic uh, Will Smith is because Noah is going to start copying his language very, very soon over time. Check, check that out. Um, back to 
back to the idea of of when we first saw Will Smith talk about this because it had been a minute and he was had this kind of haloed interview that he did and he said uh, back then that it was nuanced and complex. So he's still back to this, this is nuanced, this is complex, uh, but he does admit to having lost it, which he didn't in that first interview that he did. So things have moved forward. He's now saying he's lost it, but he's still being a little bit more, a little bit standoffish by going, it's nuanced, it's complex, you might not be able to understand it, or I'm not going to get it across because of that. He says, I guess what I would say, so that's quite indefinite, I guess what I would say, well, what would you say? Like, say what you're going to say. And then his eyes roll back and he has this eyelid uh, flutter as well, which, which seems to suggest to me struggle and disbelief and a search going on, or he's having a seizure. I don't think he's having a seizure. So I think there is there is a sense of he's struggling with this, what he's going to say. There's a slight disbelief in himself. There's a search for information. And then he looks Noah straight in the eye and says, you just never know what someone is going through. And that is direct, aggressive. There's disgust on that. It's a challenge to Noah. And there's a little uh, snort that my dog Peach does as well that... <laughs> to to see everybody off the territory. That is Will Smith's challenge. You can challenge me no more because you never know what somebody else is going through. And anyway, it's it's complex and it's nuanced. Well, we could know what somebody is going through because you could just tell us. Maybe it's not complex. Maybe it's not nuanced. Maybe we can get it. Maybe we're smart, you know, and human, and we can get it. And maybe we'd understand. Um, and he says, well, um, you know, not that that justifies anything. Well, it might actually, if you just tell us what was going on, we might get it and we might get, we might go, well, justifiably so, justifiably so you'd step up and hit the guy. I totally, sorry, I totally get it now. I'm a smart guy. You told me, thank but he doesn't do any of that. That's kind of interesting. He deflects to the audience, as, as, as you've said, guys, you know, he, he quickly makes, <laughs> takes it off him and into the audience. I was going through something. Well, what? What were you going through? Uh, you could just tell us and we might get it, but he's not telling us, uh, not telling us at all. Uh, so for me, not a good start from either of them because it's a very soft interview at the moment and he's not saying anything. In fact, he's challenging us now that we, that we cannot understand this and we shouldn't question him anymore. You know, you are... No, you are. You, you, are, you, you will Smith. Yeah. You, are, you mm. are one of the biggest movie stars that has ever existed. You know, one of my favorite people that I've ever seen inhabit a screen. Thank you, man. You know, and then... You, you had the Oscars. Yeah. Where in one night you... I have no independent recollection of the... Uh, <laughs> I, I can only imagine, you, because you, you know, you, you, you won, you know, you won your first Oscar yeah. that night, a well-deserved Oscar that night, but it is, it is simultaneously, in many ways, not yeah. the worst, I won't say the worst, because I know yeah. the life you've lived, I've read yeah, the book, yeah, yeah. but it is one of the best days of yeah. your life and one of the worst days yeah. of your life. And I, I would, I'd love to know, I mean, just, you know, us yeah. talking, First of all, what has the journey been like since that day? Like, because we, we everyone speculates, everyone yeah, just yeah, sees yeah, it and yeah. goes, I think this, I think that, I think mm -hmm. this, I think that. What has it been like for you? Yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was a horrific night, uh, a, as you can imagine. Um, you know, there's many nuances and, and complexities to it, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, I just, I lost it, you know? And I guess what I would say, you just never know what somebody's going through, you know? Mm. You know, in the, in the audience right now, you know, you're sitting next to uh, strangers, you know? And somebody's mother died last week, you know? Um, somebody's child is sick. You know, um, somebody just lost their job. Somebody just found out their spouse cheated. You know, there's, it's like there's all these things and these, there's strangers and you just don't know what's going on with people, you know? And there's, I was going through something that night, you know? And 
Uh, not that that, you know, justifies my behavior yeah, at no, all. No, I would just course. say, you know, you're asking what did I learn? And it's that um, we just got to be nice to each other, man. You know, it's like, it's hard. And I guess the thing that was most painful for me is I took my heart and made it hard for other people. You know, right. and it's like I understood the idea where they say hurt people hurt people. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, you know, it's it's interesting. I remember again, everybody was speculating. One of my friends called me and we're talking, mm -hmm. we're talking. Everyone's got these opinions, and then someone said, mm -hmm. "I feel like we saw the real Will Smith in that moment because mm -hmm. there's a guy who's so full of love and so positive." But yeah. I feel like in that moment we saw the real Will Smith. And, and I said, and not because I know you, you right. know, but, but I said, honestly, I said, no, if anything, I feel like it was the opposite. Like, you know, you talk in your book about growing up so afraid mm -hmm. of conflict. You yeah. grow up in your book talking about how you were always afraid to fight with, how you were afraid to. For me, it felt like in watching yeah. that moment, I felt like you were like, is this, it's like in a weird way, it's like you, you stood up for the wrong thing at the wrong yeah, time, yeah. in a way. Yeah, you know, do, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It, nah, it felt like you'd taken everything, because here we are, you know, yeah. human to human, man to man, but like, people have said some yeah. things about you and your family. Absolutely. You know, you're mm -hmm. a human being. It, yeah. it felt like, and I, I would say this to people, I was like, it is, it's becoming relentlessly now. Yeah. And yeah. people think it's okay. Yes. That's the thing, people think yeah. it's okay. And not Chris, by the way. Yeah. I'm talking about people, the internet, etc. But it, it, it felt like this was Will Smith for the first time going, okay, is this how you want me to respond yeah. or not? Yeah, no, nah, it, it was, you, you know, it was a lot of things. It was the, the, the little boy that watched his father beat up his mother, you know. It's, uh, you know, all of that just bubbled up yeah. in, in, in that moment. Um, you know, I just, that's not who I want to be. Right. You know, you've known me for a long time, so you know me personally, mm -hmm. so you know. Um, but, you know, y'all might not know. Um, <laughs> oh, you, want, you, you, know you know, it's like, that, that, that is, that, that's not who I want to be, man. I'm trying to, you know. I'm All right, Greg, what do you got? Well, you know, <laughs> just conveniently has a tissue with him. Makes me question the tears right off because I've watched mm -hmm. lots of these things and people have tissues there that whoever's crying, they'll hand over the box and that kind of thing. Interesting. He brought his own tissue, which makes me go, mm, I'm suspicious of the tears. He's a great actor. So I'm suspicious of his tears right off. And I see some apprehension in, in him as Trevor is asking the question. I see him lean in. He barriers, meaning he puts his hands together, closes up get something in front of him. And then he starts adapting or moving his fingers together and milling. That's just releasing nervous energy. And I don't think it's anything really afraid. I think he's just prepared for what's coming. You watch his finger taps as he waits for his opportunity to deliver his response. I think he knows the question. I don't think there's anything really exciting or interesting here. The audience has now started to connect with him. They're laughing at what he says. So he started to get them to win them over. Um, I, I don't think there's a whole lot here. Other than that, you guys probably see a lot of other things. I'll leave it at that and say, Scott, what do you got? All right. Uh, yeah, I'm with, I'm with you. I think he's pulling out his show Kleenex to show that he's having emotion about this and he's he's feeling, you know, strongly about it. Unless he's had emotion before, but we're, we're going, our video started a few minutes in, you know, you know, now see, now I'm doing it. Dang it. You know. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, so he's got, he got me. So I, I think... I think he's trying to connect with him, like you were saying, Greg. You're right. There's not a whole lot of, of, of really big things here that I'm seeing that, that stand out. Um, and I don't feel like he's blaming anybody uh, or blaming anything. I think he's just explaining what's happened on or, or what's happened to him from, from the first part of it on. And his right hand is laid over his left hand. And we see a little bit of space between his fingers. Now, quite often, what we when we look for space in between your fingers is because of this. If someone is stressed or they're, they're not sure about what's going on or they feel... Uh, like a, a lesser uh, lesser person in the situation, they don't feel as dominant as they probably should, then you'll see that, that space go away. But he's actually got a lot of space in there for the position he's in. So at first I thought, well, Scott didn't have any confidence, but I think he does have confidence because that is indicative of someone with, with confidence in the situation they're in at the moment. So that's the way that looks, looks to me. Then we see that little pacifying... Um, gesture there where he keeps doing that with it with his finger that's laid up on his hand he keeps rubbing his 
his, uh, his index finger keeps rubbing his other finger. So he's trying to, to subconsciously, I think, blow off some of that tension that may be up. But then again, this may be nothing for him. You know, on one hand, you look at it and say, it's be really stressful. It is. But in the real world, for his life, what he does, this is probably nothing for him, uh, a situation like that. But we see that, so that makes me think something's up there a little bit. Uh, now, at this point, his head is completely in front of his hands. They're over the barrier. So he's even coming closer to Trevor Noah. And if you watch Trevor Noah, he does, and I keep saying this, but he does such a great job. We, I know we all get into people who are interviewers and how they do it and how they pull information out and the way they set things up. But he really is doing a dang good job here, I think. Laying the thing out, telling everybody what's happening, and then throwing it over to Will to clean it all up, to clean his parts up. I think he's doing a great job with that. Um, at the beginning, I think he's, he's speaking from the heart. And then he goes back to his comfortable place with the Yanaz. You know? And um, his cadence has slowed down. His volume is lowered. His tone is softer. So he's, he's now settling into his delivery of, of the important things he's going to talk about at this point. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, uh, it, very much the same stuff. That tissue is ready. You know, if you've, if you've got a tissue, it's going to be in your pockets or it's underneath his leg, I believe. So he's placed it there, ready and easy to get so he can show, show the tissue, symbol there of I'm having, I'm having feelings. So there is, there is obviously some preparation ahead of time to go, I either think I'm going to have feelings that require a tissue or um, I will have feelings that will require a tissue. Certainly there's some pre-planning going on here for sure. Um, he says, oh, so the, so Noah, the interviewer, um, really sets up a narrative for him and goes, and goes, you know, the, basically the internet was to blame. Really it was the internet that's to blame. And this is how you, you know, this is you saying, this is how you want me to respond. And Smith goes, yeah, no. So he's, <laughs> He doesn't, though he's set up with an idea, he doesn't really take that idea and run because I'm not sure that Noah's idea, the feed, is is really resonating with him. It's not the right feed. He says, it was a lot of things. The little boy that watched his father beat up his mother. It's a lot of things. That it, That's one thing. If it's a lot of things, tell us all the other things. My guess is, is the first thing he mentions isn't, that's that's sim that's a symptom. That's that's not a cause. I, I want to know. I want to know what are the other things and what was the main thing. So as an interviewer, I'd be going, yeah, okay, I get it. That is one of the things. What are the other things and what was the main thing for you that that caused this to happen? So for me, the interviewer. I mean, it's you know, it's 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 nighttime entertainment. The guy's trying to stop his you know, company crumbling and sell a sell a film. You know, for for Apple who've put in. I don't know how many million, but it's about 130 million. Apple are in on his on his current current project, and and they want to they want to make sure they get the money back. So I understand what's going on here. We just all need to understand what's going on here. This is a this is somebody saving their company and and getting a sales pitch in. Uh, you know what? Last thing, you know. <laughs> Is, is this crossed arm, this Gangnam style that's going on. I've started seeing that with a lot of celebrity interviews when they're in trouble. We saw that with, who's the guy who's- Cuomo, Chris, Chris yeah, Cuomo. Yeah, Chris Cuomo was doing the same move. I, I think to suppress a dominant hand or to suppress aggression that might come up. I don't know whether there's somebody out there teaching that they might be, cause I'm seeing it quite, quite a bit. If they are, hmm. it's a good, it's a, not a bad idea. I've been trying it out. It's not very natural. It's like, I don't no. know when you'd naturally do that. And that's why when I see that, I go, I, you know, I don't remember the first time my kids ever did that. <laughs> you know, you never go, you never go, oh, look, look, they're doing the Gangnam style thing. So it's not very natural. Um, so I think it's, it's put on for some reason. It might be about control during this. There might be somebody out there going, do that. It's, it's better for you. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, that's all I got on that one. Uh, Chase, what you got? Yeah, so this is a, a, a classic example of projecting. So it's it's just hinting at the idea of projecting the blame onto something else. This is something we do in interrogations. So Will uses a history to describe what might be responsible for what happened. This little boy who watched violence happen in his home. 
I do think this is honest set up the handkerchief or the tissue set up, whatever. I don't think it's unscripted. He seems very unscripted to a large degree. I think this is good that he didn't prepare very much because it makes the conversation appear more natural. His speech is flawed. And I think that helps us helps to remind just regular people that he's more like us than we thought. And that's uh, why we get addicted to celebrity stuff. That's all I got. I just, that's, that's, how you you lean. that's how you do it. I'm going to have to give that one to Greg, though. Greg was in what? and serious. This yeah, is man. nonsense. Yeah. This no. is just don't nonsense. Worry, don't worry. You'll, you'll get one soon. <laughs> don't worry. And it's like, you know, it's, it's interesting. I remember, again, everybody was speculating. One of my friends called me and we're talking, mm. we're talking. And everyone's got these opinions. And then someone said, mm. I feel like we saw the real Will Smith in that moment, because there's mm -hmm. a guy who's so full of love and so positive, but yeah. I feel like in that moment we saw the real Will Smith. And, and I said, and not because I know you, you right. know, but, but I said, honestly, I said, no, if anything, I feel like it was the opposite. Like, you know, you talk in your book about growing up so afraid mm -hmm. of conflict. You yeah. grow up in your book talking about how you were always afraid to fight with, how you were afraid to... For me, it felt like in watching yeah. that moment, I felt like you were like, is this, it's like, in a weird way, it's like you, you stood up for the wrong thing at the wrong yeah, time, yeah. in a way. Yeah, you know, do, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It, nah, it felt like you'd taken everything, because here we are, you know, yeah. human to human, man to man, but like, people have said some yeah. things about you and your family. Absolutely. You know, you're mm -hmm. a human being. It, yeah. it felt like, and I, I would say this to people, I was like, it is, it's becoming relentlessly now yeah, and yeah. people think it's okay yes that's the thing people think yeah. it's okay and not chris by the way yeah. i'm talking about people the internet etc but it, it it felt like this was will smith for the first time going okay is this how you want me to respond yeah. or not yeah no nah, it, it was you, you know it was a lot of things it was the 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 little boy that watched his father beat up his mother you know it's a, you know all of that just bubbled up yeah in in in, in that moment um you know, I just, that's not who I want to be. Right. You know, you've known me for a long time, so you know me personally, mm -hmm. so you know. Um, but, you know, y'all might not know. Um, <laughs> no, you, want, you, you, know you know, it's like, that, 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 it's, that, that's not who I want to be, man. I'm trying to, you know. I'm so, on my side as a human being, I go, the reason it was shocking is because that's not who you are. Yeah, Does that yeah, make sense? Exactly. Like, exactly. I, like I saw, for instance, there was, a, there was a, uh, an article that was written, I think it was a Hollywood Reporter or whatever. They had a list of like problematic actors or whatever. I was personally offended for mm. you and Letitia, funny enough, in it, for a different reason, but they had you guys in a list where I was like, wait, some of these people are here for sleeping with underage kids. These people are here for mm. abusing their spouses. The, yeah. And again, what you did was up. I'll always tell yep. you that I love yep. Chris. I'm friends with him. I yep. love you. I'm friends with But I was like, this is up. Yep. But I was like, but it's not the same world. Yeah. And that's where it was weird, especially I find, you know, because there they, they were all these dynamics. So mm -hmm. I know that as black people, black people will be together and be like, what was Will doing? What the hell happened here? Yeah. Right? But then I know a lot of black people were like, you know, when people came out and they were like, he should go to jail. We were like, you need to relax yourself. <laughs> it, it, it was a weird, like some people yeah, were overreacting, yeah, yeah. which made some people underreact. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, nah, it's, it's the, I understand, you know, how shocking that was for people, man. Right. You know? Um, were on you that shocked? stage. You seemed, you seemed a little dazed afterwards. I'm yeah, not gonna yeah, lie. no, I, I was gone, dude. I was gone. I was gone. I was, um, you know, that was a, a rage that had been bottled for a really right. long time. Right, right. Um, and, you know, but it's, it's I understand the pain, you know? Yeah. It was like, um, my little, my nephew, Dom, is nine. And he is the sweetest little boy. He's like, you know, we came home and it's like he had stayed up late to see his Uncle Will. You know, and we're sitting in my kitchen and he's on my lap and he's holding the Oscar. And he's just like, why did you hit that man, Uncle Will? You know, <laughs> why are you trying to Oprah me? Yeah, and he's scary. He's sitting on your lap and yeah, you know.
If you don't know who we are, we're the Behavior Panel, and I'm Scott Rouse. I'm a body language expert and analyst, and I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation and body language. And I created the number one online body language course, bodylanguagetactics.com, with Greg Hartley. Mark? I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language, help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, gain credibility every time they communicate, including some of the leaders of the G7. Chase. Hey, I'm Chase Hughes. I did 20 years in the U.S. military, wrote the number one best-selling book on behavior profiling, influence, and persuasion. You can learn about all that today. Just type my name into your app store. Greg? Greg Hartley, former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor. I've written 10 books on body language and behavior, put together the number one body language tactics.com course with Scott Rouse, and I spend most of my time on corporate America. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, before he says rage, there's a, um, I'd like to know what the, um, is. I think there's something else there. There's something else that he'd quite like to say. He hits rage. It's not that there isn't rage there. Cause we do get a nostril flare. I think of anger on that. So I think that's accurate, but I think he's holding back something before he goes to rage. I'd like to know what was the other word or idea that he was coming up with. Um, he really does play that story to the audience. He knows when to go out and, 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 and face it out to the audience and start telling that, that story about the, the, the nephew. He hits the innocent uh, cadence of that young child. So rather than reporting it, he starts to perform the child, knowing that that will tell a better story. He gets somewhat of a reaction from the audience, but in my mind, not enough to evoke the reaction that he himself then does of, of having that hanky ready, going for his his tears, and then, you know, invoking the queen of, of high value revelation, uh, you know, stop opering me. So it's kind of, all of that felt a little bit arch to me. I think that is, I think he kn he knew he was going to go for that story. I really think he, he knew he was going to play that one. Fair, fair play, fair play. But uh, I don't think that's come in the moment for him. But I'm, I'm prepared to be uh, challenged on that. Uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, if you were to pay attention to the number of Yano's and how much his story changed once he got to the point he starts to tell this little boy story, he gets more smooth. I think he could not afford to come across in the very beginning as articulate and smooth as Will Smith normally is without being perceived as uncaring. So I think coming through and doing this slow, you know, you know, that's him testing the water until he gets to a certain point. And that is, you're, you're dead on, Scott. You said earlier there's a virus now. They all have this thing going. It's even picked up among us by watching it. Count the number of you knows we've done just to see. See how many. Put them down below. But what you'll know is he is trying to get attention for what he's saying and trying to make sure you understand. You see him raise his brow, what I usually call request for approval. Request for approval means I'm asking you to believe me, whether it's a lie or truth. It's not deception here. He's just saying, do you understand? And then he squints a little at you to make sure you're picking up what he's talking about. Trevor Noah goes on and on and on. And I think even, even Will Smith may be amused a little if you look at him smiling in his eyes and not in his lower face as the guy just continues down the path. I think if you get to this part where he is starting to tell you the story and you pay really close attention, you'll see that that's the main thing he he's preparing. Mark, I'm not going to hit all the cadence and all that. Dead on. He brought the childlike innocence back into this, and he relaxes people a little bit. Now they're starting to laugh. I think he's made a connection, and that's what he's here for at the end of the day. Every one of us has made a mistake. Those mistakes can be career-ending, and Mark, I think you're right. There's a big movie at, at in play. There's also his entire career in play. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, you guys hit a bunch of this stuff. There's just a couple of things here that – uh, we're into a different category now. We're not projecting anymore. This is another interrogation technique that we use called rationalizing. And we see that here in this video. And right when the moment he says shocking, you see the eyebrows go up at the perfect time. And when he says on that stage, we see disgust on the face when he says on that stage, 
and a postural retreat, which means he's leaning away, trying to get away from that that topic. I think it was honest, uh, scripted, and rehearsed. To, when we say those things, we're not telling you that they're lying or being deceptive. So uh, I just want to make that clear. We're not calling him a liar here, but scripted and rehearsed are probably just smart for how many millions and tens of millions of dollars are on the line. And just probably he's a man of legacy. He's a socially driven creature for sure, uh, like me. And he wants legacy to be there for his kids. He wants he cares about like his reputation with his fans and his family more than anything else. And he's just I think he's humanizing himself with the nephew story rehearsed or not. That's all I got. Scott, what do you got? All right. Uh, I think this is where I think uh, you guys are right. This is where we see the most um, genuine expression of emotions is in this video. And when Trevor, when, but when Trevor Noah says um, he shouldn't have gotten in, in so much trouble and some people overreacted and all that, let's think about what he did. He smacked somebody. That's assault. That's against the law. You can't do that without getting in trouble. There, there are consequences for that. But he didn't pay any consequences for it. And what he did was was childish and it was immature. He slaps him and then he goes sits he sits down he starts cussing in front of all these people like the worst words you can possibly say he's saying them on tv so if he's going through something it must have been something horrible something really bad that he's going through to be doing that because that's about the most unprofessional you can get at that point so he in that in that situation so i think he's he's if he's being honest, which I think he probably is, man, he must have a whole lot going on at home and a whole lot going on up there to trigger something like that. Oh, and you're right, Chase, when he says, um, I understand how shocking that was for people. His eyebrows are up and it's like he's almost living vicariously through the audience seeing him. I know that sounds weird, but almost as a third person, because I think he knows how they're going to be looking at him at that point or seeing it. And then when he says, like you said, Chase, when he says on that stage, that's the largest expression of disgust we've seen in, in all the videos we've done. I think, have we done two before this or just the one? <clears throat> two. Because um, we're having that thing where they're all bunched together. But I think, um, but that's that's the, the largest disgust we've seen in him so far. Um, and when he talks about being gone, he hangs his head in shame. And that's a classic behavior we look for when someone is supposed to be feeling an emotion and feeling shameful about something. That's where you see him totally go, drop down and his head drops. And he, I think he feels shame about that. I think he, he, he knows what he's done or what happened. And after all that horrible said, that stuff I said about him, I think he realizes that and knows that. So I think he's, he feels ashamed about doing that. That's what I would take from, from him doing that. And then he talks about his real feelings. I don't think it's somebody has told him to do that. I don't think it's somebody's trained him to say that. I think it came out naturally because he's his vernacular at that time changes. It's like Greg was saying, it's much smoother than it was before. Before this video, he said, you know, nine times in the second video and this one, he says it nine times as well, but they're not so pronounced. They're not as big. They're not huge like they were before. The, I think is the illustration of rage in his hands. Uh, appears to be authentic as well when he's talking about the anger he was feeling he's talking about the things he was going through then we get when we get back to the to the acting part that he's doing he dabs his eyes as he turns toward the audience and he makes a, a big deal about crying that we don't see really any tears maybe his eyes are a little bit glassy but not enough to need a, a kleenex to take care of that you know so i think that might be a little bit of of prep there i think he was ready for that and then we're back to the yanas so on my side as a human being, I go, the reason it was shocking is because that's not who you are. Yeah, Does that yeah, make sense? Exactly. Like, exactly. I, I, like I saw, for instance, there was, an, there was a, uh, an article that was written, I think it was a Hollywood Reporter or whatever. They had a list of like problematic actors or whatever. I was personally offended mm. for you and Letitia, funny enough, in a, for a different reason, but they had you guys in a list where I was like, wait, some of these people are here for sleeping with underage kids. These people are here for mm. abusing their spouses. The, yeah. And again, what you did was, up. I always tell yeah. you that I love yeah. Chris. I'm friends with him. I yeah. love you. I'm friends with But I was like, this is f up. Yeah. But I was like, but it's not the same world. Yeah. And that's where it was weird, especially I find, you know, because there they, they were all these dynamics. So mm -hmm. I know that as black people, black people would be together and be like, what was Will doing? What the hell happened here? Yeah. Right? But then I know a lot of black people were like, you know, when people came out and they were like, he should go to jail. And we were like, you need to relax yourself. <laughs> it, it, it was a weird, like some people yeah. were overreacting, yeah. Yeah. which made some people underreact. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, nah, it's, it's the, 
I understand, you know, how shocking that was for people, man. Right. You know, um, Were on you that shocked? stage. You seemed, you seemed a little dazed afterwards. I'm yeah, not yeah, lie. no, I, I was gone, dude. I was gone. I was gone. I was, um, you know, that was a, a rage that had been bottled for a really right. long time. Right. Um, and, you know, but it's, it's, I understand the pain, you know? Yeah. It was like um, my little, my nephew, Dom, is nine. And he is the sweetest little boy. He's like, you know, we came home and it's like he had stayed up late to see his Uncle Will, you know? And we're sitting in my kitchen and he's on my lap and he's holding the Oscar. And he's just like, why did you hit that man, Uncle Will? You know, but, that, you're, you're, why are you trying to Oprah me? Yeah, and he's carrying, he's sitting on your lap, and yeah, you know, it, it was a mess. You know, I don't want to go too far into it to give people is, more is it, is to it, misunderstand. Is, so. is it is it is it hard? You know, you you have lived. I realized this morning when I was thinking about you coming on the show. You are one of the rare breed of human who has lived more of your life yep. in the spotlight than out of it. Yep. You got into this mm -hmm. industry as a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, you grew up and blew up into it as a young man. Yep. You had your tax issues, you had your life, you had your mm -hmm. family, you had, you, you know, but you have lived in this world. For so, it's, it's funny, again, I, I realized, chatting to friends, and I was like, you know what's interesting here mm -hmm. is, for us, this is the Oscars. Yeah, yeah. For Will Smith, this is like a cookout. Right. <laughs> and I'm not diminishing the, the Oscars, yeah. but I go like, those are your people, that's your world. Yeah, this is like yeah. this, you know, and I, and I was like, I, I, I was saying, I think that is part of the reason mm. many of us were that show, because you go like, you, it's this lauded event. It's, yeah. it's bigger than life. Whereas many movie stars are at the Oscars, like, oh, nice to see you again. Hey, good mm. to be here, good to, yeah, good yeah, to be yeah. back. And I feel like that, that was part of the disconnect. I feel yeah. like that was part of, but, but what I, what one, I, yeah. The one thing that's killing me, um, you know, so Emancipation is, Antoine's masterpiece. That's what right? I want to ask you about. Yeah. He has created an absolute masterpiece. Um, Bob Richardson, the DP, and Ben Foster, and just all, all the way down. It's like these top artists in the world have done some of the best work of their career. Yeah. And the idea that they might be denied because of me is like, oh. You know, it's like that, that, that is, is killing me dead, you know? And it, it's like the, the, the thing that is so critical for me is that, you know, these people came and they trusted me and they were down right. for, for me. And, you know, I just, I, I, I hope that their work will be honored and their work will not be tainted based on, mm -hmm. you know, a horrific decision on my part. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I'll be quick on this one. He's over the top with that big laugh. That's the connection thing. But I think it may be him. It may be something he does when he's feeling in, in that situation. He goes into that, you know, connection, you know, you know, until he gets to deliver his next big part of his message. Again, the you knows drop off entirely when he's talking through the mechanics of it. He's saying this thing occurred and it may cause a great movie not to be nominated because of me. Once he gets through that big message and all the illustrators and everything he came there to say, he drops back into that familiarizing you know. And I think it's a connection with people because as he starts to talk about feelings, he goes back to you know, you know. Interesting. Not saying he's, you know, is it prepared? Absolutely. He's prepared to come in and talk about two big things. And I think his first message was, I let down my nephew. And his second message is, I let down my crew. That's what I see in this entire interview. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so maybe unconsciously, there's some other themes that come across, which 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 aren't so laudable. Um, I don't want to go too far into it, give people stuff to misunderstand. Oh, no, go 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 into it and and we'll work out whether we misunderstand you or not like if we have a proper dialogue you can tell us what went on yeah we're bright sensible people unless you think we're not and we're just this horde of internet that constantly get stuff wrong and in in noah's imagination you're going this is the stuff you want me to do we're some some 
you know, horde out there who can't understand the way life is and will just misunderstand it, get it wrong. I mean, that, that's what seems to be, seems to be a little bit condescending, I think. Um, because you could clearly tell us and say what's going, what went on, or you could say it's private and I'm not going to go into it and find another way to promote your film. But what's decided here is you'll hold back and say, we, the public, will get it wrong. We can't understand it. It's complex. It's nuanced. You're a bit of a horde out there and you'll misunderstand. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, then Noah joins in with the condescension, which is to us, it's the Oscars. To you, it's just a cookout. Well, and he says, I'm not diminishing the Oscars. In a way, you are. That's why you said I'm not diminishing it, because you are diminishing the Oscars. You're certainly diminishing the public's view of this incredible costly event that gets put on in order to cause the public to want to go and see films and have stars. So there's there's a there's some there's a there's some complexity going on here which i think is quite simple to understand both here are looking to elevate the star we've got to get this person back up in the sky make them a guiding light again that we would we would follow in the darkness uh because we are uh, a horde of of the unwashed in the darkness of the internet, <laughs> need and need a guiding star once more to show us the way forward. Will Smith, thou art elevated once again. Anyway, that's what I think of it. Chase, what do you reckon? I'm just blown away by that. But, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just it's honest behavior. So the behavior is not dishonest, uh, per se. His description of how letting these people down when he worked on the movie is genuine. The emotions are uh, concealed a little bit with this bodily movement that you see here because there's more shame in this than anything that he's spoken about so far. So Will is comfortable with embarrassment, admitting stupid decisions, openly discussing guilt, openly revealing this crippling feeling of letting people down. The one area we see Will conceal anything here is when it comes to shame. This element is where I think he feels it the strongest, and he's still wanting to discuss it without bringing the emotions of shame into the picture here. I think all the behavior here is honest and flowing. And I've been waiting this whole entire time since we started filming for Mark to talk about this purple jacket and how it's associated with royalty. And <laughs> I, I feel let down, Good call. actually. So, right. <laughs> uh, am I, was that the last one? No, that's me next. Scott. All right. Last. Sorry, Scott. Okay. So I think Noah does a great job leveling this whole thing out. Uh, from the emotional side by making Will laugh. And I think he's, he's, he's truly, that's one of those laughs that you get when you're um, trying to put push someone up and, and then say something really cool about him, make him laugh, because it's really cool what he says about him, about the, um, about the Oscars. But I understand what you're saying, Mark. It comes from, uh, um, he, he says he doesn't want to make him, don't want to be trashing him, but he's, he sort of is, I think. I agree with you on that. Now, this is his apology section to the people who made him uh, – made the movie he got an Oscar for. And it looks real. And the few times, I think it's the, the it's one of the few times we see real true emotion here. I mean, we see it come out, but when it does come out, man, it comes out pretty good. And I think at the, at the end of that little uh, speech, he says about that movie and how great it is and how great the people are and all that. Again, we see him hang his head in shame. I think he's, he feels bad about that. He really does. I think at the time when he popped off, he didn't think about any of that stuff, as we all do when we pop off about something. So I think that that's what makes him feel so ashamed about it because he knows, obviously now he knows it was a bad decision to make. Again, his his cadence, his tone, his vernacular, everything turns returns to the classic Will Smith. And the, the NOs, even though I think he did nine in this one as well, they sort of disappear. How many does he do in this one? Seven in this one. So I think those, 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 they, they diminish even more as he's going through there because he's, he's really clear. His diction is clean. It's really good, really good. So he's still in there, 
And, he, and so this is the most we've seen of the real Will Smith and that thing where he was where he went on by himself and was answering questions from the Internet or whatever. Wow, that was pretty bad. But this is I think we're actually seeing I think he might might be getting his confidence back and coming back. His illustrators are really big. Again, that's the old school Will Smith. They're getting uh, he's always using big illustrators and, and connecting that way. His diction, again, I, I want to say it again, is really clean and clear. Before we've seen it, it was it was it just sounded bad. I mean, his his tone was low. Things they were clear, but that wasn't him, quote unquote, if you know what I mean. Didn't sound like him. And when he says, I hope there will their work will be honored and not tainted, you know, uh, based on the decision on my part. If he hadn't had the, the, added the Yana, you know, I think I would have been more into it and, and take it a little bit more seriously. Um, again, a fantastic job by Trevor Noah because he's he's setting and controlling that mood, not only for Will, but for the audience as well. And he's setting that thing up. If you could stand back and look at what he's doing, he's just carving out all the bad stuff and just saying, Will, you're a great guy. Look what a great guy this guy is. I know he's a great guy. And making it look like he's he has the same revelations about about Will Smith as the audience does. He wants them to have that revelation as well. And I think it's working. I think he's doing a great job. I know I keep I know we get on here and we harp about some interviewers and I'm harping on this one. I, I think he's doing a great job of pulling off what what he was supposed to do on this. Or I think what he if they're friends, if they're buddies, then he's on there doing that the right way and really wanted to focus on what was happening because I think he's knocking it out of the park as an interviewer on that. All right, we good? Okay, Mark, I'll give you that one. See, see, that's yeah. the way you do it. it. It was a mess, you know. I don't want to go too far into it to give people is, more is it, is to it, misunderstand. Is, so. is, it, is, it, is it hard? You know, you, you have lived, I realized this morning when I was thinking about you coming on the show, mm -hmm. you are one of the rare breed of human who has lived more of your life yep in the spotlight than out of it. Yeah. You got into this mm -hmm. industry as a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, you grew up and blew up into it as a young man. Yeah. You had your tax issues, you had your life, you had your mm -hmm. family, you had, you know, but you have lived in this world. For, so it's, it's funny, again, I, I realized, chatting to friends and I was like, you know what's interesting here mm -hmm. is, for us, this is the Oscars. Yeah, yeah. For Will Smith, this is like a cookout. Right. <laughs> and I'm not diminishing the, the Oscars, yeah. but I go like, those are your people, that's your world. Yeah, this is like yeah. this, you know, and I, and I was like, I, I, I was saying, I think that is part of the reason mm. many of us were that show, because you go like, you, it's this lauded event, it's, yeah. it's bigger than life. Whereas many movie stars are at the Oscars, like, oh, nice to see you again. Hey, good mm. to be here, good to, yeah, good yeah, to be yeah. back. And I feel like that, that was part of the disconnect. I feel yeah. like that was part of, but, but what I, what one, I, yeah. The one thing that's killing me, um, you know, so Emancipation is, Antoine's masterpiece. That's what right? I want to ask you about. Yeah. He has created an absolute masterpiece. Um, Bob Richardson, the DP, and Ben Foster, and just all, all the way down. It's like these top artists in the world have done some of the best work of their career. Yeah. And the idea that they might be denied because of me is like, oh. You know, it's like that, that, that is, is killing me dead, you know? And it, it's like the, the, the thing that is so critical for me is that, you know, these people came and they trusted me and they were down right. for, for me. And, you know, I just, I, I, I hope that their work will be honored and their work will not be tainted based on, mm -hmm. you know, a horrific decision on my part. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and on a personal level, you know, I think I speak for many people, if I don't, mm -hmm. forgive me, but, you know, obviously people were hurt yeah. because you know, we, we love you and we love what mm -hmm. you do. Um, people were shocked because, you know, it's Will Smith, it's Chris Rock, it's, you know, yeah. you know it's the yeah. Oscars, all these things. But I, I also think I speak for people when I say, like, I don't want that to define you. I don't think it should define right. you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, thank you, thank you. I don't think... Yeah, yeah. I don't think any one of us... I don't think any one of us in life deserves to be defined by our f up. Like, yeah, the, the, the f up, the you one. know? Uh, if anything, I mean, like, you, you and Chris have the biggest story to, to, to handle on your own. It's yeah, not yeah. our, you know, our, our foray. But, but yeah. yeah, man, I, um, I hope you don't stay hidden forever. No, I, no, I hope I hope you know no, that you don't always have to bottle it up. I hope you know that mm. you 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 not being perfect is what'll make you perfect. You Will Smith, man. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you're that dude. We love you, bro. For real. I think... You're that dude, you know? I, I think that was, that was one of the big things for me over this last couple of months, you know, that I had to forgive myself for being human, you know? And it's like... Trust me, there's nobody that hates the fact that I'm human more than me. Yeah, I know <laughs> that. No, but I know that, yeah. You know, um, and just, you know, finding that um, space for myself mm -hmm. within myself to be human. You know, right. it's like I want, I, I've, I've always wanted to be Superman. I've always wanted right. to swoop in and save the, the damsel in distress, you know, um, and... I had to humble down, you know, mm -hmm. and realize that, that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a flawed human and um, I still have an opportunity, you know, to go out in the world and, and contribute in, in a way that fills my heart and hopefully helps other people, you know, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you, Greg. I, don't, I wouldn't want to be Superman. I was always a Spider-Man guy. What were you, Mark? I, I would, Spidey's great. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I would want to, who, who doesn't want to be able to climb walls? Yeah. yeah. Well, if I had as much money as Batman and as many toys, <laughs> I'd be just quite happy. What yeah. were you, Chase? Batman. Yeah, Superman's a bully. So, Greg, you were Batman, too? So it's, okay, Mark, it's me and you, man. Spider-Man against Two Batman. Spider Two Spider-Mans. Two oh, Batmans. Yeah, whip that too. <laughs> so we both went to places where we got really expensive toys to play with is what we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and Mark from the streets. Yeah. Yeah, and, and bitten by radioactive well, spiders. spiders. <laughs> <laughs> well, I live in Oak Ridge, man. I grew up in Oak Ridge. Let's not forget that. You probably have been bitten by radioactive Yeah, spiders. I've been in Oak Ridge. You have radioactive frogs. Just didn't work frogs. out so well for you, right? Yeah, they had radioactive frogs. No kidding. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and they found yeah. out because they started fighting, you know, they in in Oak Ridge, since it's the place where they designed the most, a lot of the nuclear weapons for America, there's a lot of radiation around here, a lot of things going on. So what happened was they go around <laughs> with these, with these, uh, a Geiger counters and see if there's any any radiation anywhere that shouldn't be. And so they're in the grocery store parking lots, they were finding radiation and they couldn't figure out why. They're like, why are we getting, why are we these things jacking up in the parking lots of the grocery stores? Because when people were coming home from work out at the plants, they were running over these frogs where there'd been a radiation leak in one of those, in one of the uh, big ponds out there. And the frogs were jumping out of the road. People would run over them. And then when they went to the, par to the grocery store, they would park in the parking lot and would heat up the, the parking lot out there. That's crazy. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. Weird. No wonder the, 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 the chicken's so hot out there. You know, for like <laughs> 40 years, Oak Ridge was, it was illegal to list Oak Ridge on a national map. Not surprised. Yeah, it didn't exist. Not surprised. Yeah. You'll walk around out in the woods here, and there'll be a sign that says, don't go any further. Somebody will be here in just a minute. You know, right. and, and, and then there's all the, the glowing, jumping frogs. <laughs> then you have a bunch of frog, show, frog people show up. Yeah. And we always got our pictures. We take our pictures and by those Bob signs Lazar. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And Bob yeah. Lazar. <laughs> yeah. Bob has a little cottage just down the road. Mm. Sure. Little place. Okay. Shoot. Here we are. All right, Chase, what do you got? I think Trevor in this clip here assists a lot uh, by pre-socializing, or I'm just making that word up. He's pre-socializing the incident for, for just setting it up. And he's saying, I need to forgive myself for being human. I think he is masterfully letting us know not only what to do with him, but he's offering us probably very good advice for what might be good for us to do uh, for ourselves. And that, uh, is pretty good when it when it applies to a person it helps us forgive a person and it also feels like something we should maybe allow into our our mindset a little bit we're 10 times more likely to accept it so this is him saying that there's just little gap here and i need to allow that gap we're more likely to accept it so that's all i got now mark what do you got yeah so i think here we get potentially the most revelatory and honest body language in the whole piece. I'll come to that in a second. But before that, uh, first of all, just notice how many times Trevor Noah now says, you know, uh, the, his opening statement, his opening thought, it's about, I think, five, four or five times. Um, and 
he offers, I love this, he offers you, uh, you not being perfect is what will make you perfect. Well, that's what we call a truism because it sounds really good, but it's utter nonsense. It's complete nonsense because it utterly contradicts itself. Uh, but it sounds kind of beautiful. So I'm always worried when in pieces of spin, somebody gets a truism past us. That is utter nonsense, but it feels like, yeah, yeah, the thing, yeah, not being perfect is the thing that is, is perfect. No, it's not. They're two separate things. You can't have both at the same time. It's just abject nonsense. So uh, Noah gets that out. And then we get the truest piece of body language, which um, uh, I still have an opportunity, says Smith. And we get a single shoulder shrug from him and disdain. I think he's sincerely worried that that his opportunity is gone. He's not going to get another go at this. He's, he's blown it completely. I think there is a sincere worry for him that that um, that there are no more opportunities for him. He's done. And he wants to get the chance to help other people. And then we see more disdain. I don't think it's disdain for helping other people other people. I do think that's a kind of classic thing to put forward. You know, I, I only do this film stuff to help other people. That's all I'm about. I'm not sure that's all his film career is about. I don't think that's probably why he went into, into film. I don't think anybody goes into Hollywood going because I want to help everyone. I want to help the children. I want to help people. I don't think anybody really goes in for that, for that reason. So that, that worries me, but help other people. We see disdain. I think again, it's disdain potentially for himself. I think it's disdain for this sit whole situation, which is, which is about to potentially in his mind, ax his career completely. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Uh, it'd be a shame, maybe if it if it did, because he is an incredible uh, star that we hadn't seen before. Total unique, total class of one. Uh, amazing. Went up and slapped somebody. Lost it, didn't he? Lost it, and he won't tell us why. He lost it, and he won't tell us why. Scott, what do you got on this one? I think we need to talk about <clears throat> how Chase's blue shirt makes his eyes pop. It does. Look how blue your eyes are on this. <laughs> it's because that new light. <laughs> yeah, so the lighting's working this time. Yeah. Thank okay. <laughs> right, Georgia well, convicts this... wear white with a blue stripe, just so you know. Don't do don't wear oh. that in Georgia. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, here's here's the end section where a great interviewer helps repair a damaged brand. And I think I think Trevor Noah, and I keep saying, does a great job of this. You know, I think it's because he's a comedian, and comedians take a lot of guff. I have to say, guff, a lot of <laughs> you know what from people uh, when they're when they're out being comedians. So I think you get really good at that, and I think a lot of that confidence is is from doing that is is where he's gotten a lot of his confidence. And he walks you through, or he walks you, or you and the audience through what Will wants to say to the audience and to you. Uh, to, uh, what what he wants you to leave what he wants to leave you with in other words so i think he does a great job of doing that in in the overall in these five videos we've watched now if we'll left out the yanaz it would have been, i think it would have been a little bit more powerful if he had kept being himself he may not be able he may not be at that point yet but i think if he if he hadn't tried to re, tried to lean back in that comfort zone of using yana every other sentence he's down to 10 in this one he only said it 10 times i think it would have done a little bit better I think he might still be in there and if he's trying to make a, a comeback i think i think he may be able to you know if he gets his continues to get his head together um but he's still using too many phrases from therapy and the Inaz. i think that's what's sort of damaging him here for me anyway so greg what do you got i think you have to be careful when you've already done the thing he did after the slap that you don't come across as out of touch. And I think all the you knows are to make him human. That's all I think he's doing. I do think he came with a message, an intended message. And the, the last two pieces come out here, Mark. And I agree with you when he says opportunity and does that single shoulder shrug. I think he may be a little concerned that he may not have that opportunity, but he came here to, to say, I'm only human. I made a mistake. I had to admit that I'm human as much as I don't want to be. I want to do more good things. That's the end of the messaging. And I think, Look, 
when I say this, that doesn't mean I think the guy's being deceptive by any stretch. I think like all of us, we all make mistakes. When your career is on the line, you're going to try to figure out how to get back to where you were. And I think that's exactly what he came here to do. And he's delivering that message and he has people talking and paying attention to him by the end. He gets when when the audience actually connects and laughs or cheers, see his face light up. You can see that's what he does this for. Let's face it. People that do this for a living, Mark, you've been there before. People that do this for a living appreciate when the audience appreciates what they do. So you can see that real smile of acceptance in his face. And then he goes into that forgive myself in some very specific language. I don't think it was an accident. I think all of this messaging coming in and saying, I was going through more than you can imagine. And, and, and I'm only human. And I hope I have another opportunity. You know, and, and. On a personal level, you know, I think I speak for many people. If I don't, mm -hmm. forgive me. But, you know, obviously people were hurt yeah. because you know, we, we love you and we love what mm -hmm. you do. Um, people were shocked because, you know, it's Will Smith, it's Chris Rock, it's, you know, yeah. you know, so yeah. Oscars, all these things. But I, I also think I speak for people when I say, like, I don't want that to define you. I don't think it should define right. you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, thank you, thank you. I don't think... Yeah, yeah. I don't think any one of us... I don't think any one of us in life deserves to be defined by our f up, like yeah, the, the, the one, f up, the you one. know? Uh, if anything, I mean, like, you, you and Chris have the biggest story to, to, to handle on your own. It's yeah, not our, yeah. you know, our, our foray. But, but yeah. yeah, man, I, um, I hope you don't stay hidden forever. No, I, no, I hope, I hope you know no, that you don't always have to bottle it up. I hope you know that mm. you, 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 you not being perfect is what will make you perfect. You Will Smith, man. Yeah. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Oh, You're yeah. that dude. We love you, yeah. for real. I think you're that dude, you know. I, I think that was that was one of the big things for me over this last couple of months, you know, that I had to forgive myself for being human, you know. And it's like, trust me, there's nobody that hates the fact that I'm human more than me. Yeah, you I know, know that. <laughs> no, but I know that. Yeah. You know, um, and just you know, finding that. Um, space for myself mm -hmm. within myself to be human you know right. it's like i want I, I've, I've always wanted to be superman i've always wanted right. to swoop in and save the the damsel in distress you know um and i had to humble down you know mm -hmm. and realize that that i'm i'm a, I'm a flawed human and um I still have an opportunity, you know, to go out in the world and and contribute in, in a way that fills my heart and hopefully helps other people. You know, so. Mm -hmm. well, let's throw it around the room one time and talk about what we think we've seen and see if we can knock it down to 30 seconds or less and wrap it up. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, for me, this is the Hollywood machine trying to support the cash that's gone in there. There is a man there trying to save his career at the same uh, same time. My, my heart goes out to him on, on that. Um, there was a not missed opportunity here, which is Trevor Noah is a comedian. One, another comedian got slapped on stage. There's, a, there's a, an interesting set of questions that Noah could be asking in this situation from his point as a comedian uh, who, who was, who'd have to take a lot of guff Scott, including getting slapped now by uh, A-list celebrities during major events. Uh, Chase, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think this is one thing I've noticed with Will and just about every other human in the world. When a person reaches a point in their life where they felt like they're not in control for a long period of time, one small incident can make somebody behave in just super erratic ways when the incident does two things. Number one, it makes them feel out of control. So it's a little spike loss of control. Number two, it shines a bright light on how little control they feel like they have. So bringing all the insecurities right in front of their face. And this is where you see road rage, bar fights, and almost any other situation where somebody just has this unexpected surge in violent or angry behavior. And this is, this is it. This is the lost control tipping point, let's call it. Greg? I agree with you 100%, Chase. This is a bright light on an ugly baby somewhere is what happened. There's some baggage he has, and we don't know what it is. It's likely somehow tied to his wife, something that had happened leading up to. We saw 
her roll her eyes and make hard eye contact and him. He was laughing until then in the thing. So here he has to come back and he has to say, look, no matter who, I, what I did that night, I'm still the guy you love. That's what this whole message is about. And I think he get, did a convincing job by the end, but with trying to connect with people. But at the end of the day, you're dead on. It's that entire thing. People are under a lot of pressure in different places than we know. We know the Will Smith that he presents to us. We don't know what goes on behind his house door, what kind of conversations him and his wife are having, what other things are going on, maybe business-wise, and something boils up to that point. It takes a lot, however, to walk 50 feet and slap somebody. That's a lot. That's not a, a sudden boil up. That's a long-term boil up and something that it has been simmering for a while. Scott, what do you got? I, I, I'm going to say what I said before. I think this is a great interviewer repairing a damaged brand or attempting to repair a damaged brand. And I think you're right, Mark. I think that the, the, you've got a comedian on one side talking to an actor on the other side. And if he was on the, the comedian team, then he would have, there were some other questions he could have asked and a little bit different attitude he could have, have had in there. But I think maybe they're buddies or friends. And that's why he's going easy on them. Plus you're right again, Mark, they're trying to, it's Hollywood repairing Hollywood at that point. So that's what it looks like to me. All right, fellas, I think this was another good one, and I'll see you next time. So what do you got?